Hey guys, okay, so welcome back to Let's Play uh, Serendipity. Um, we are going to be now moving on to the epilogue chapters of Show Hattori. He's got a new saying, having you by my side makes me feel braver. So again, to recap what's happening in the epilogue. It's been five months since the incidents at Karo Mansion. Your relationship with Sho is going well, and you even bring him along to meet your family. But there are still some things you feel Sho is keeping from you about his new life, especially since he's now, you know, a Jean Grey Dark Phoenix. An incident ends up bringing the two of you closer, but it may also serve as a dark omen for the future. So why don't we go ahead and move to chapter one, Memories of Love. I squint against the setting sun's light streaming in through my windshield. Oh, Shu looks so cute! Sho! Sho looks so cute in his new outfit! Yes! He's so handsome! Why the, do why the long face, Sho? I'm sorry that I can't drive well enough yet. Man, I feel like such a lame boyfriend right now. This isn't the first time Sho has said this, nor will it probably be the last. Sho, it's fine. I don't mind driving. In fact, I enjoy it and I haven't gotten to do it in a while, so it works out. Sho had explained to me that he never really wanted to learn how to drive since he thought walking was easier and healthier anyway. I glanced over at Sho in the passenger seat, but he still seemed to be pouting. I wish my parents would have taught me. He barely speaks above a whisper, but the moment the words are out of his mouth, I understand why he seems so upset. I turn my attention back to the road, but place my hand on top of Sho's and give it a squeeze. In the past few months, Sho has been trying to move on from his problems with his parents. But at times like this, I realize it still really affects him. If it really bothers you so much, maybe I could teach you sometime. Maybe even this weekend, since I'll have the car. Really? Well, maybe it's still uncool to be getting lessons from your girlfriend, but... Oh, come on, show. I, I would think you, of all people, would be on, you know, like, gender, gender standards, gender norms. I want to be able to help you out sometimes, too, and be the best man for you I can be. It's really not a big deal, but thanks. Sho says things like this so casually, and I still can't get over how much how they make him me feel when he does. But won't your dad think it's lame? Kao will probably, no, definitely tease me. Don't worry about it. Dad would be happy to see you trying to better yourself. He's not going to judge you like that, and Kao isn't like that either. I give his hand a squeeze. Try to lighten up some. I like it a lot better when you're smiling. Huh? Oh, I see. Sho looks down at his hands before looking out the window, and I feel a surge of affection for his, this gentle man. Not long after that, we slowly came come to a stop in front of my father's house. Is this really it? Yeah, why? Oh, you were probably expecting something bigger. Well, yeah. Dad isn't really like that. He does have other homes in Japan and around the world, but he doesn't really like big houses where no one ever see no one ever sees each other. Especially because he's hardly home in the first place. I'm climbing out of the car when the front door swings open. I see someone familiar come running towards me with open arms. Kayo? Harkura! I catch my little sister in a big hug and she squeezes me tight. I look up and see that my father is standing in the doorway, smiling. Hi, Dad. I'm so glad to see you, Harkuro. Kayo finally pulls away and looks up at me. I missed you so much. I wonder what went on with her boyfriend, you know, that we were talking about over the phone. I hear the car door close behind me, and Kayo peeks around me. Oh, you brought Sho, too! Hi, Sho! Hi, Kayo! Sho looks at my, uh, my dad, and I swear he looks paler. Hello, Mr. Shinomura. It's been a while, Sho. Come in, come in. Dinner's almost ready. Kayo asked to cook it herself tonight. I look back at Sho, and her eyes meet. There's no need to be nervous, Sho. That's what I try to communicate to him. I can't stop smiling, and finally a smile spreads over his lips. Kayo immediately begins tugging my arm, though, and I let her lead me into the house. We're all sitting down in the living room, chatting about our daily lives. Kayo rises to go to check on dinner, but before she leaves the kitchen, she bends down and whispers something in my ear. No hanky-panky while you guys are in the house. Don't forget my room is right next to yours. Kayo? Kayo just smiles at me innocently before continuing into the kitchen. I very pointedly look, avoid looking at Sho next to me. Harkura, why are you all red? No reason! Before my father can ask more, I quickly change the subject. 
After a nice dinner, we all sit back down and Dad looks at me. I stare back at him, questioning when he speaks. Harkura, would you go and get that photo album from my office? The red one, please. Okay, but... You're not going to show show pictures... Show show. You're not going to show show... Show show pictures of me when I was younger or anything, are you? Of course! I always want to show off my wonderful daughters. With a sigh, I pull myself up from the sofa and walk off into my father's office. I go into my father's office and pull out a desk drawer where he keeps his albums. My father is a sentimental man at times, and I know he likes to look at photos of us when he gets stressful. When work gets stressful. I even caught him doing it, though I've never let on. When I open the drawer, though, on top of the, of the albums, I find a picture frame I've never seen before. Curious, I take it out and look carefully at it. It's a photo of my stepfather, looking very young, maybe in his early 20s. And in the picture with him is Shizuka. I do the math quickly and... What? But they said they... But they said they had only met after I was already born. Were they lying to me? Was even Dad lying to me? I hear footsteps and then I look out towards... I look towards the sound to see my father approaching. Did you already forget where I kept the al keep the albums, Arkura? But when father sees the expression on my face, his eyes quickly move to what's in my hands. Kayo's head peeks up from behind him, and I see Sho appear behind her. Sis, what's taking so long? Kayo, I'm sorry to ask this so suddenly, but would you please go to your room? Oh, well, that's not suspicious. Kayo looks at a, a bit taken aback, but after eating the room, she slowly nods. See you guys later. Once she walks out of the room, Sho looks back at us. Should I be going to... No, it's fine. In fact, maybe you should hear this. Dad gestures for us to sit down on the couch, and we do so. You want to know the true past between your mother and I? Is that right? Yes, anything. Everything. I want to know whatever you'll tell me, Dad. Now this is cool. It's a long story, so I apologize, but I'll try to explain as best as I can. Nice, we get a lot more insight on this. I fell in love with Shizuka a long time ago, when I wasn't much older than you. But she didn't have the time of day for me, and I had to be very persistent with trying to get her attention. I had an overabundance of confidence back then, and so I asked her out easily. But your mother didn't outright say no or yes to me. She later told me that she knew she shouldn't get involved, but there was something about me that made her think twice. I don't know what it was, but I'm grateful for it. Eventually, I was able to convince her to go on a date with me. Father's eyes glaze over a bit, filled with nostalgia. I was so happy about it, I ran down the street screaming about it. He chuckles. I don't think I could have been more excited. But as luck would have it, during the date we were attacked, and Shizuka f was forced to protect us. That's when she finally explained who and what she was to me. But that just made me even more determined to be with her. I realized how lonely she must have been all these years, but Shizuka broke it off with me. She told me that she couldn't die. She said that she didn't want to sit there and watch me grow old and die while she remained unchanged. After our brief romance, Shizuka disappeared. I tried to move on with life. I even got married and we had Kao. After my wife died, I managed to track down Shizuka, and she told me of what she did with you, Arkura. How and why you were created. I think she expected me to leave after hearing how far she'd gone and to get a chance at getting rid of her curse. But perhaps I am a horrible person because I understood. I could see how desperate she was to be free. And when we got married and you were born, I resolved to always be a good father to you, Harkura. Father finally falls silent, looking at nothing in particular. I can tell he was, he'd tell just talking about this must have been very hard for him. Perhaps it was being crushed under the weight of his knowledge, of this knowledge, as much as I was bothered by not knowing. As for me, I have so many emotions, but mostly, I feel so, so relieved at finally hearing my mother's story. That she had her reasons, that dad really does love me, and that mother probably never hated me. Thank you, Dad, for telling me about Mom. Harkura, I think, I think somewhere in my heart I re already realized it how desperate mother must have, mother must have been. When I think about back to the day to that day in the car, I remember that she wasn't acting normally. She was gripping the steering wheel so hard that she was almost shaking. I don't think Mother went about getting rid of her curse in the best way, but in a way I'm thankful for it. It's because of what she did that I'm able to exist now. And because of that ritual that I was able to meet Sho and fall in love with him. Sho reaches across and grabs my hand, intertwining our fingers. I look up into him, surprised that he would do something like that in front of my father. But even when I look up at him, he doesn't let go. 
I suddenly remember that time on the pier, how I had vowed that I'd do anything to see Sho again, to how I was determined to do anything possible to get him back. It was back then that I had first been able to come to a kind of understanding about Shizuka's actions. And now I know, now I truly understand that she never wanted to do this. I feel like Sho's touch and smile gives me strength. And so I find words tumbling out that I never thought I'd... That I never, never thought I'd say. I think I... I forgive Shizuka. I feel like I finally understand why she's so distant all those years. Why she was so distant all those years. And if I could see her now, I think that maybe... I'd like to try again? To start a new relationship as mother and daughter? I... I hope she'd let me anyway. Because there's so much about her that I want to know. And so much she could teach me. I look up and see that my father has tears in his eyes. Harkura, I think she would love to hear that. I can't presume to always know what my darling is thinking, but... I think somewhere deep inside, she always wanted that kind of relationship too. A normal one, between a mother and a daughter. I find myself getting to my feet and walking over to my father. He stands up and I hug him tightly. The sudden emotional moment even has Sho staring to te starting to tear up beside me. I feel like a part of me that was stuck in the past can start moving forward again. I'll tell you in person one day, Mom, and then I'll learn about your life in your own words. The door bursts open and then Kao strides in with a smile on her face. Hey guys, I just finished making dessert! Kao, I thought you were upstairs. You didn't hear any of, what, of that just now, did you? Oh, sorry, I got a call and had to come downstairs. I figured I might as well finish making dessert while I was down here. Come on, guys, it's custard cream pie I made myself. Yum! Kayo starts to pull me by the arm, and I let myself go with it. I'm not entirely convinced that Kayo didn't hear any of that, but I smile at Sho and signal at him to come with us. I'll ask Dad later to tell me more of Shizuka, my mother. After everyone finally retired for the night, Sho and I moved into my room. Despite the fact that Sho managed to forget his pajamas... Oh! That's okay, Sho. You don't need pajamas. You don't need to... You just, just peel it off and who cares about pajamas? Pajamas are overrated. I've changed it to my own bed clothes. The funniest thing is that he actually remembered to bring his keys for once. I feel a pleasant calmness wash over me at the sight of the familiar surroundings. It's been a while since I stayed over here. It might feel a little strange to sleep in this bed again, especially with... My eyes fall into a very curious looking show who sits himself on the edge of my bed. His eyes seem to dart everywhere, from the bed to the bookshelves, the little scratches on the floor, and all the little trinkets that I have left there. It's not like we haven't... But this is new. It's my family home, my dad and sister in the house. As I quietly watch Sho, my eyes travel to his lips, down to his jawline, neck, and... Ah, uh, no. What am I even doing right now? Stop it, Arcora. This is not the place for that. I reluctantly tear my eyes away from him. It's getting late. We should get ready for bed. Oh? Uh, uh, oh. Sho jumps up, nearly tripping over his own feet. <laughs> um, um, so good night. He says this as he gets ready to lie down on the floor. I feel my lips twitched into a smile. Oh, he's such a gentleman. Sho, what are you doing? <laughs> That's so adorable. He's such a gentleman. Even though I know, I still ask. Despite being the brilliant actor that he is, Sho can't quite hide his nervousness from me. My daddy isn't even that scary, really. He gets back up, awkwardly rubbing the back of his neck. Following my example, Sho crawls into the tiny bed next to me. We whisper our goodnights that are all too loud in the otherwise soundless room. That's sweet. My eyes feel heavy, but I can't seem to fall asleep. I can't tell how much time has passed since we went to bed. I don't even want to check. Sho lies next to me completely still. Even without touching, I can feel the heart, the heat raining off of his body. It's amazing how he's always so warm. All of a sudden he moves, turning his whole body towards me. Can't sleep either? He asks me, his voice just barely above a whisper. I turn to my side to face Sho. Yeah, I'm tired, but for some reason I can't fall asleep at all. I think I just it just feels so strange to be back here at home with my family. And it's nice to have you here with me. It feels different, but a nice different. Sho smiles sweetly at me. He reaches out and gently touches my cheek. Sho's warm, soft touch tickles my chin. His fingers slowly trail across my chin. He looks at me so seriously with a, such a look of concentration. It's as if I'm the most important thing in the world to him. His thumb gently caresses my lips. It tickles a little bit, and I find myself giggling. Harkura. Sho's hand slides down, wrapping his arms around my waist and pulling me close into one rough move. 
My heart jumps at seeing the side of him. In my head, I know he we shouldn't do anything like this. Kayo's room is right next door, but... Sho seems so intense. She seems to sense my hesitation. His soft whisper has a kind of roughness to it as he speaks. If you're worried about Kayo, don't. I think I heard her say she was sneaking out tonight with some Yuki guy. Oh. Oh, Kayo's having a little something some herself, too. Sneaking out with Yuki? Dad would probably yell at Kayo if he found out, but if that's actually true, it means Kayo's not here. Sho whispers so quietly that I can scarcely be sure of what I heard. So, will you give- Wow, that's pretty- that's pretty forward! Will you give yourself to me tonight? Sho! A little bit more- could you- could you word that a little bit better? Well, I guess it could be worse, but... Ugh, oh, it's the epilogue. We've been dating for how many months? We've been dating for several months. Why not? It's all in good fun. It's all in good fun, everybody. Why not? I'll risk it then. With my body pressed up against his like this, it's becoming harder and harder to think anyway. I grip at Sho's shirt. He pulls me closer still and turns, pulling me up, to, up on top of him. My heart beats wildly against my chest at the thought of getting caught in this position. See, I'm kind of happy that this is happening now. You know, when it's months along in the relationship and not during the main storyline, because I feel like if they made this step, you know, during the main storyline, it would be a little too a little too fast for my taste, too soon. So at least they've actually been in a relationship for several months. Um, and obviously, if you want ladies out there, if you want to wait, there's no shame in wanting to wait. There's no shame at all. But this is a video game, so <laughs> it's, it's, this is a video game. It's all in good fun. It's all it's all in good fun. Sho continues to quietly look at me, a smile tugging at his lips. With my hands on his chest, I can feel his heart beating hard and fast. Slowly, I lean down and seal his lips with mine. Sho's arms tighten around me. One of his hands travels under my shirt. He slowly, lightly trails his fingers up and down my back. A pleasant chill shoots through my whole body as his fingers dance on my skin, even though he's really warm. Mmm. I can't hold back the moan that escapes my lips. See, things are getting... This this epilogue is a lot, a whole lot, you know, um, spicier than, than, than the main storyline. I'm impressed. Sho's lips travel down my jawline as his hands move lower and lower. His hot lips on my neck, hands roaming all over my body. The feeling of his hard body under mine, the way his rapid, ragged breath warms my already heated skin. All of it fills my sense and I bite down another moan forming in the back of my throat, threatening to escape. Even though I know Kao could be next door, right behind the wall, I don't want to stop. I slip my hand under his clothes. His skin feels like fire under my fingers. Sho shivers at my touch. He presses his head back into the pillows and only a quiet groan escapes his lips. I fight back a grin and continue with my administrations, enjoying seeing Sho squirm under me. Harkura. His whisper is colored in desperation. Even in the dark, I can see his golden eyes shine with overwhelming need. In one swift movement, Sho flips us over and I find myself on my back instead. Sho grins and leans down to close to me, whispering, I hope you can stay quiet tonight. <laughs> Sho! Oh, gosh. He's so funny even during this moment. The room is filled with the sound of clothes falling to the floor, ragged breaths and strang strangled moans until dawn. Wow. Now that's a good way to end chapter one. Chapter two, the dark precursor. I'm waiting for Sho on one of the benches outside of Hagiwara. He'll be done with his drama rehearsal soon so we can go on a date. I'm playing a social game on my phone, glancing up every now and then at the passerby. That's when I see keys clatter to the ground in front of me. Instinctively, I reach for them at the same time as their owner does, but I'm just a moment faster. Oh, sorry. I start to offer the keys, but I notice one of my favorite anime characters attached to them. Oh, is that Mika? She's one of my favorite characters! I hold out the keys and see that their owner is actually a girl I've seen her on campus before. Yeah, it is! She's awesome! She reaches out and takes the keys from me. Hey! You're Arkura, right? Yeah, and you're Matsuda, right? You got it! Emi Matsuda! So you like advancing titans too, huh? Matsuda, or Emi, just sits down on the bench next to me. I notice she has paint speckled on all over her. She looks fun. I love, I love girls with short pink, pink hair, short hair like this and pink. So super cute. 
Yep, I saw the movie a few months ago with, with my boyfriend. I like wispy, wispy, wispy-haired girls. I giggle a bit remembering how uncomfortable show was with the movie when he thought it was a romance. Things have changed so much since then. You have a boyfriend? Yeah, his name is Sho. He's really sweet. How do you even have time for a boyfriend? I can barely keep up with classes and art. Well, it wasn't really a choice. I told myself I didn't have time for a relationship over and over. But life is unpredictable. You can't choose when you fall in love. That's very true, Harkora. Besides, it got to a point where all I thought about was Sho anyway. It was way harder trying to concentrate without him. It sounds like you really like him. I do. I love him so much, it's ridiculous. He must be a great guy. Hmm, I wonder if it's the same show I know, though. Probably, he's pretty well known for a second year student. I can't hide the pride in my voice as I babble about show. Then, as if appearing on, as if appearing on cue, I see him walking up to us. I rise off the bench and rush to hug him despite myself. He takes me into his arms and I sigh, feeling more than comfortable. In the corner of my eye, I see Emmy turn her head away from us, scratching her cheek. A bit reluctant reluctantly, I step back from show. Hey, Emmy, what's up? He answers so casually that I almost feel betrayed. He's never mentioned Emmy before. I know I'm being silly. It's not like Sho could ever tell me everyone he knows, but yeah, don't be don't be jealous, Harkora. You know that Sho's is gonna stay true to you. Hi, Sho. So you are the same guy Harkora has been gushing about. How do you you know to know each other exactly? That's simple enough. My brother hangs out with Shinji, so I tag along sometimes. Yep, Shinji has a lot of musician friends, so sometimes they hang out at our place, or I meet them at gigs. Oh, makes sense. It's ridiculous, but I can't shake off this feeling of jealousy or betrayal or whatever it is. Of course Sho had a life before me, and a life outside of me, and it's not like he and Emmy ever dated. At even the thought of the two dating, I feel suddenly irritable, but Emmy seems to pick up on it. Don't worry, Harkura. The last time I saw Sho a month ago, he was completely bummed about some cancelled date with his girlfriend. I bet that was you, right? Shinji said all he ever talks about is how his great his girlfriend is since they got together. Emmy, come on. Well, it's true, all right. There's no need to be ashamed. I think it's important to say that what you're thinking or feeling as much as you can. Besides, she's just as in love with you as you are with her. She was just talking about how great you were a second before you came. I think you guys are adorable, though. Art's my only love, and, I find, and I'm fine with it, with it staying that way for a while. Any negative feelings I had evaporate with Emmy's smile. Good, good. Don't be jealous, please. Because that just... Jealousy can destroy things if you're not careful with it. Just like that, I can tell she's a really kind person. I'm a little nervous, but if she already knows Sho and Shinji... Emmy, do you want to hang out sometime? It could be with the guys, or maybe just us. Sure! I've got to get going now, but we should relax and watch some anime sometime. Emmy walks over to me and we exchange numbers. Then she steps back and waves. Alright, it was nice talking with you guys. I'll see you soon. Have fun! We watch as Emmy disappears into the distance before Sho pulls up me close, a bit more aggressively than usual. Sho? I saw that cute little frown of yours, you know. What frown? When Emmy told you she had hung out with us before, were you possibly jealous? Well, what's got into you? I think we've been I think you've been hanging around too much with Shinji and Taku. Sho just laughs. There's no point in denying it. I'm sorry if I'm being mean, but I like the idea of you getting jealous over me. Oh, well, why? Sometimes you can be so strong and independent, I feel like you don't rely on me. And you're so beautiful and smart and kind that I sometimes feel really insecure. Sometimes I think that someone's going to come take you away from me. Oh, Sho. So if you feel jealous, that means you love me, right? That you want to keep me all to yourself, just like I want to do with you. Oh, Sho. After all this time, I didn't know how he, f he felt. I didn't know he felt like that. Not sure what else to do. I ignore all the students passing us by and turn my head to give him a peck on his little lips. I don't know where you're getting these ideas from me, about about me from. But I'm just a normal woman. I need you in every way possible. Sometimes I feel like I need you just to be able to breathe. And I want... No, I need you to need me like that, too. That's simple enough, since I already do. Sho kisses me this time, very slightly, just a quick brush of the lips. It leaves me wanting more, but I seem to have just remembered that we're on campus, on campus sidewalk, and not alone in the least. Let's get going to Chewbacca, then, before I change my mind. Right. I take Sho's hand, and we head off to go on a casual date in the Ch Chewbacca district. 
I learned in the time since we started dating that Sho loves to take me out shopping. He likes to buy me so much stuff that's usually more me trying to get him not to buy anything than actual shopping. Wow. Wow, ladies. Ladies. Guy that enjoys taking you shopping. Sho is definitely one of a kind. He is a gold mine. I don't need anything right now, Sho. Really? Really, I'm trying to convince him to put back a white teddy bear he saw me glance at. Are you sure? You looked like you wanted this. Absolutely, 100% sure, Sho. I just want to spend time with my boyfriend. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. 